Oh. Hello. You made it to day three, and that's so incredible. You should be so proud of yourself. Today's theme is be easy on yourself. Kind of like you would the sweet puppy. Be easy on yourself. Um, we'll let that unfold during the class, but I just want you to keep coming back to number one, your breath, always your breath. But number two, let it go. Let go of the prejudgment, let go of the current judgment. Let it go, let yourself be easy. For today, we're gonna need two blocks, always. And also, I'm gonna invite you to have a blanket to pad your knees if you need it. You may not, but it's always nice to have options. So make your way onto your mat and let's get started. So we'll begin today's breathing practice a little bit differently. So we've been focusing on breathing in and breathing out equally through both nostrils and exhaling through the mouth. And today we're gonna do a alternate nostril breathing to balance the left and right hemispheres of the brain. Um, so with an open mind and spirit, you're gonna take your ring finger and your thumb and then place your two fingers that are between them at your third eye center, which is right between the eyebrows. You're gonna close off your left nostril with your ring finger and breathe in through your right nostril. And then you'll close both nostrils off and you'll exhale through the left nostril. And then you'll inhale through the left, close off, and exhale through the right. And then you'll inhale through the right, close off, and exhale through the left. I'll walk us through the first few rounds. Your arm might feel a little bit tired, that's perfectly normal. Some people have even brought their knee up so they can rest their elbow on their knee if that's comfortable. You can sit on top of a block or a few blocks or a couple blankets too, just to make yourself comfortable. And try to find that spinal extension here, whatever that means for you. Be easy on yourself. And we'll begin. So again, bring the first and second finger to your third eye right between your eyebrows. You'll close off the left nostril first, breathe in through the right. Close off both, and then exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close off both, and exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close off, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close off, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close off, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. And exhale through the right. One more time, inhale through the right. Exhale through the left. 
Inhale through the left. Exhale through the right. And then you can release the hands. Come to a very still moment. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. and breathe out. And we're just gonna take a moment here together to set an intention to be easy on yourself. With any challenge we're met with today, be easy on yourself wherever you are in your journey. Maybe even be surprised by yourself on where you are in your journey already. keeping your mind and your spirit open to possibility. With that said, when you're ready, take your time, move slowly. We're going to make our way onto all fours into a tabletop. So here you can pad your knees if you need to, or you can just have your, your blanket set up in case you'll need it in the future. So coming into our spinal extension, spread the fingers really wide. Try to get some stretch through the palms of the hands. Elbow creases face each other. Crown of the head pulling forward, tailbone pulling back behind you. Breathe in and breathe out. Begin to move through your cat cows. As you inhale or exhale, whatever makes sense to you, draw the belly down, the heart forward. Crown of the head and tailbone point towards the sky. And exhale or inhale, whatever makes sense to you as you round your spine. Shoulder blades part. And take your time, move with the breath through these two poses and adding any other poses that you want along the way. Maybe you want to sink back into your child's pose and then dive forward into your cow pose. You know the spinal movements now are, ex what we're doing here is just warming the spine up. So it's a forward fold, an extension, a back bend. You can move from side to side. You can twist if that's wh where you wanna be. You know the fundamental spinal movement. So let yourself feel free here. We'll take one more round, inhale and exhale. And then when you're ready, make sure again, those hands are spread really wide. You're gonna press down through the finger pad right underneath the first finger, claw the earth with the fingertips, curl the toes under, lift your hips up into a downward facing dog. You can walk one leg out at a time Breathe in, breathe out. If you need a little mini inspiration or affirmation for this practice, you can breathe in, be easy. And you can breathe out, let it go. Breathe in, be easy. And breathe out, let it go. We're never aiming for perfection here. We're just aiming to feel good in our bodies. So you're learning how to do that. So with your knees bent, we're going to shoot our tailbone up towards the sky, reach our heart back towards our thighs, let the weight of the head hang. So it's common for most people to have a lot of tension here where we're looking straight at the ground and cricking our neck a lot. Instead, imagine that you're looking back towards your feet. So your ears are in line with your upper arm bones. And you feel a really long line from your tailbone to the crown of the head. Check in with your hands again. Press down through that first finger pad. 
that's the longest down dog we've held, huh? One more deep breath in. And as you exhale, we're gonna come back down into our tabletop pose. Bring the knees as wide as the mat, toes touch, sink your hips back into a child's pose. Walk your hands all the way out. And take one deep breath here. On your next inhale, we're gonna make our way back up onto all fours. Bring the knees back underneath of the hips. This time we're gonna keep the hips in the air and walk our hands forward like we do in child's pose and reach our heart back. So this is called puppy pose and you might notice that it's very similar to a downward facing dog. Same things are going on here. We're still reaching our heart down and back towards our thighs. Our tailbone is trying to reach towards the sky. There's a long line of extension from the crown of our head up to our tailbone. And I just wanted to show you this pose to remind you that this is always here too as a modification. If downward dog isn't working for you on any day for any reason whatsoever, you can always choose this modification. You could do two downward dogs a class and then choose the puppy pose for the rest of the time. It's always up to you. Begin to walk your hands back in towards your body. Cat cow. Initialize the movement with the breath. I've been saying recently to myself that movement that doesn't include breath or follow breath is really just flailing. <laughs> and I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else, but if you can imagine doing this pose without any breath, it really just looks like I don't, unsafe, <laughs> I would say. But if you are following the rhythm of the breath, there's more fluidity, there's more grace. And it even sometimes invites more creativity of movement because you're able to feel where your breath is maybe restricted or blocked off. And then you can begin to move in ways that open up any places that feel super tense or tight. On your next inhale, make your way back into a tabletop. Spinal extension. Press down through the first finger pad, spread the fingers really wide, claw the earth with the fingertips, curl the toes under, lift your hips up into a downward facing dog. Bend the knees, shoot the tailbone up, let the weight of the head hang and reach your heart back towards your thighs. Breathe in. Breathe out, let it go. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and exhale back down onto all fours, keep the knees under the hips, walk the hands out into your puppy pose, you can let your forehead come to the ground if that's available to you. You can let your forearms rest on the ground as well. And just let your heart melt down. So your shoulder blades are sort of moving in towards each other a little bit. Tailbone is moving towards the sky. Breathe in. Breathe out. Notice if the breath is affected in any way in this pose, if you feel more free or like it's moving into a new space. Breathe in. Breathe out. On your next breath in, start to walk the hands back towards your knees. Bring the knees as wide as the mat. Toes touch, sink your hips back into a child's pose. Walk your hands forward. Let your forehead come to the mat. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. 
breathe in, breathe out. Inhale your way back up onto all fours, extension of the spine. Spread the fingers really wide. Press down through the first finger pad. Claw the earth with your fingertips. Curl the toes under. Lift your hips up. Yay, downward facing dog again. This one probably feels different. You can sway your hips from side to side. Pedal your feet out. Take another breath to eventually move into a place of stillness with your knees bent tailbone reaching for the sky. Maybe your legs can straighten a little bit more without bringing a curve into your low back. If not, keep them bent. It doesn't matter if your heels touch the ground ever. For some of us, it's just not gonna happen. <laughs> and that's okay, be easy on yourself. All right, our first challenge. Bring your toes to touch in your downward facing dog. Breathe in, be easy on myself. Breathe out, let it go. Breathe in as you extend that right leg back behind you, lifting it as high as is comfortable for you. Doesn't matter how high, just however high is good for you. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Exhale, bring it down to the ground. Come down onto your knees for just a moment. I just want to demonstrate really fast how to move your foot from back behind you into a lunge that is safe for all of us. So if you don't need that, you're welcome to just move along with me. If you do, here I go. So we're in our downward facing dog. You can just watch for a moment. Our toes touch. As we inhale, we lift that leg up towards the sky. It doesn't matter how high at all. And then I want you to, on your exhale, we're gonna bring that knee forward. And then we're gonna shift our weight forward so our shoulders are kind of stacked over top of our wrists. And then press the ground away and round your spine like we do in our cat pose to give yourself some room to put your foot between your hands. For most of us beginners, it's actually gonna look a lot more like this. We're gonna come here we're gonna shift forward, we're gonna lift as much as we can, and then our foot's gonna come here, and that's okay. We're gonna walk our hands back, we're gonna hop it forward until it's between our hands. Be easy on yourself, because that is the way that everybody has started, every single one of us. Okay, so let's all try it together. Come into your downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. One more time, breathe in, breathe out. On your next breath in, lift that leg up as high as you can. As you exhale, bring the knee in close to your body. Shift your weight forward so your shoulders feel like they're stacking over top of your wrist. Press the ground away, round your spine, and begin to set that foot down between your hands. And then heel toe, take as much time as you need to walk it forward so it feels like it's right in between your hands. And then we're gonna drop our back knee down onto the mat. So here's where you might want a blanket just to pad the knees. You might not, and that's okay. You also might want your blocks just to lift the ground a little bit. We'll only be here for a moment here in our low lunge, and I just want you to imagine your hips sinking forward and down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. So you can probably feel this as a bit of a spinal extension. We're gonna keep that length and drop your left hand either down onto the block on its lowest setting or all the way onto the mat. Walk that right foot all the way over to the very edge of the right side of the mat. Bring your right hand to your right knee. Let your hips sink down and twist 
keep that length, keep pulling the heart away from the hips, crown of the head is reaching forward. Imagine your rib cage is rotating around the axis of the spine. Smile a little bit, lean back, breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Last one, breathe in. Fill up your whole body. And as you exhale, unwind, come all the way back to the center. Walk that foot back to the middle of the mat. And then we're gonna just shift our hips back a little bit. Slide that foot back. Bring the knees together this time. We'll sink our hips back towards our heels. And you can either bring your arms on either side of your body or you can stretch them out forward. For those of us that have a chest or any sort of things, <laughs> you can bring your knees a little bit wider than your body so that you have some room to sink down. Close your eyes and just notice any type of dialogue that was happening for you during the lunge. Maybe that was your first attempt at swinging your leg forward into a lunge. And maybe it was very challenging for you. How did you speak to yourself in your head when faced with challenge? Often how we're speaking to ourselves when we're on the mat doing something as simple as a, as simple as a lunge, we're probably much harder on ourselves about much more important things in life. We have to learn how to be easy on ourselves. It's important. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. On your next breath in, start to make your way back into a tabletop. You can have your blocks ready at the front of the mat if you need them. You might not. Spinal extension. Spread the fingers wide. Press down through that first finger pad. Claw the earth with the fingertips. Curl the toes under. Lift your hips up into a downward facing dog. Take a second, bend the knees, shoot the tailbone up towards the sky, reach your heart back towards your thighs. So you're probably feeling a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stretching in the back. This is really, really good to release tension in the low back, especially with the knees bent. Bring the toes to touch. We've been here before. This is a different side. It's going to feel different. It's going to be easier or harder. On your next breath in, lift that left leg up as high as you can. And as you exhale, you're going to bring that leg in close. Shift your weight forward. Round your spine like we do in cat pose. And then drop that foot down and then take your time walking it between your hands towards the front of the mat. Drop on, down onto your back knee. Feel free to grab onto your blocks. As you shift your weight forward, sink the hips down. So we wanna make sure that when we do come down into this lunge or anytime we're in a lunge, that our knee is stacking on top of our ankle. It's not shooting further forward than it or to either side. It's right on top of the ankle. So take a few breaths here. Feeling your spinal extension. Last deep breath in. And out. 
So you're either going to place that block on its lowest setting or move it off to the side and place your hand down on to the floor. Walk the left foot all the way over to the very edge of the left side of the mat, giving yourself some space, and then let your hips sink down again into the lunge, doesn't matter how far. Bring your left hand onto your left knee, extend the spine really long, and then begin to twist to the left, imagining your rib cage rotating around the spine. And then breathe as if you're trying to fill up your whole body, as if you're trying to make your breath reach down into your toes. Let your body soften, be easy. You can do it, just one more deep breath in. And as you exhale, we'll slowly unwind back to the center. Walk that foot back to the middle of the mat. Place both hands down and then gracefully slide that foot back, making your way into a child's pose. Knees can be together or as wide as the mat. Toes touch, sink the hips back towards your heels. Bring the forehead to the mat or to a block. And just breathe. Notice any sensations you feel in the body. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. On your next breath in, we're just gonna lift up halfway so we can walk both hands over towards the right side of the mat, staying in our child's pose, and then bring the forehead back down to the mat. We're gonna breathe into that left side of the body. Fill up the little spaces between the rib cage. Feel the space up between the ribs and the hips. One more deep breath in and out. And then you'll inhale halfway up, walk it back to the center, take a deep breath in and out here, just neutralizing the spine. And then walk both hands over towards the left side. Again, bringing the forehead to the mat, breathing into that right side of the body. Filling the space between the rib cage, the space between the ribs and the hips. Let that part of the body really expand with the breath. Let yourself melt a little bit more. One more deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhale, walk seat back to the center of the mat. Come all the way up onto all fours again for a moment. Then if you do have that blanket on your mat, set it off to the side. We're gonna slither forward onto our belly, making our way into Sphinx pose. You either love it or hate it. But I think you'll probably end up loving it by the end of everything. Spread the fingers really wide. Elbows are underneath of the hips. Press down through the tops of the feet. And then it's like you're pulling the ground towards you as you reach your heart forward, lifting the crown of the head towards the sky. Feel a whole bunch of space opening up in the front of the body. Breathe into that space.
And just quickly notice, are you dumping your weight down into your shoulders? Press the ground away with the forearms, so you're lifting up and out of the shoulders. It's also a fantastic opportunity to strengthen our arm muscles. Just by pressing the ground away, lifting up, standing tall and proud, like a regal kitty cat. One more deep breath in. And as you exhale, we're gonna come back down onto our belly. Reach the right arm out to the side with the palm facing down. And we're gonna roll over onto that right shoulder, stack your hips, let your head fall to the ground. So your left hand is in front of you, kind of acting like an anchor or a kickstand. For some of us, this is a lot, this is a big shoulder opener. So if you're feeling a lot of sensation here, then stay here. Make sure that palm, your palm of the right hand, is facing the ground. It's not facing the sky. If you're not feeling enough and you want to take it a little bit further, you can lift that top leg up, place the top foot right behind your bottom knee, and then you just gently let it fall back behind you. You're not pushing or pulling or contorting or forcing. You're allowing. You're being easy on yourself. Breathing into wherever you're feeling this pose the most. Take one more deep breath here. If your legs are not stacked already, go ahead and stack them. As you roll back onto your belly, making your way into a sphinx for just a moment, breathe in. Crown of the head's lifting up, your heart is reaching forward. And then coming down onto your left shoulder, roll onto your left shoulder, stack the hips. Right arm can be in front of you like a kickstand. You can take this top foot, place it behind your back, place it behind your bottom knee and allow it to fall back behind you. But be easy on yourself. If this is not, if you're holding your breath or trying to make this work, just it's not worth it. That's how injury happens. Just let it go. and It'll come before you even know it. It'll be here. Two breaths. And then we'll roll back onto our bellies. Now here's where the real fun comes in. So we're gonna do um, a back bend on our bellies. And we have some options here. Our first option is to interlace our hands at our sacrum at our low back space. If that's not available for you, then your palms are gonna to face towards the ground and just shoot right back behind you. If that feels too easy for you, but you still can't clasp your hands, you're also welcome to extend your arms in front of you with the palms facing each other. That's more of a core workout than the other two are. So, no matter where we're at, our forehead's touching the ground, everything's relaxed for a moment, Hands are interlaced back behind you or in front of you. On your inhale, we're gonna lift the legs up, and the shoulders up, reaching the heart forward, crown of the head lifts. Deep breath in. Exhale, lower down. Deep breath in. Exhale. One more time on your next inhale, lift everything up, do a little back bend. Smile, be easy. One more breath in and out. And on your out breath, release, let it go. Very cool, you guys. 
Make your way onto your back. And just pause for a moment. Bring your feet as wide as the mat. Your knees are going to tent in together. Completely let everything go. Relax your shoulders down. Relax the muscles in the face. Close the eyes. Come back into the breath, which is likely moving much quicker right now. Back bends have that stimulating effect on the nervous system. Wake, it's kind of like nature's coffee. <laughs> so it makes everything move a little bit faster. It makes you feel a little bit more alive. It opens everything up. So just feel that rush. One more deep breath in and out. Grab your block and place it down on the left side. We're going to extend the left leg long and we're going to roll onto the left hip. So our right hip is directly stacked on top of the left hip. So you might want your block here to rest underneath of your knee if the ground feels really far away here. And then you're gonna just extend your right arm back behind you into a little asymmetrical twist. You're also welcome to try it without the block and see how that feels. So the main thing that we wanna think about here is that our spine feels really long and extended. Our right hip is stacked on top of our left. It's not Moving back or forward of it is stacked right on top. Knees in line with the hip. Right arm is extended straight out so it's in line with the shoulder. And most importantly, you can breathe easily. And then I want you to locate the places in your body that feel very twisted up and restricted. and direct your breath into those places. You know how to do that. So our goal here is for both shoulders to be on the ground, but, and for our knee to be on the ground, but for some of us, it's just, it's not where we're gonna go right away. It's gonna take some coaxing and some opening up of the body and to inter keep introducing our spine to more mobility through twisting daily. And you're doing it. You're here. This is day three. I'm sure you already feel different in your spine than you did at the very beginning. One more deep breath in and out. And on your inhale, we'll very slowly, very slowly roll onto our back again. Bring the knees up so the feet are planted on the ground as wide as the mat, knees tent in. Neutralizing the spine here. Remember those loud, audible exhales soothing your nervous system. It's just part of the yogic work, is breathing out the crap, making space for the new stuff. So I always like to make sure I take my time between these asymmetrical twists, especially because it's a lot on your spine to twist like that and then to twist the other way right away just feels like too much to me, so I move extra super slow. So whenever you're ready, and take your time as well, we're gonna extend the right leg out. You're welcome to have your block set up on the right side of the mat. And then we're gonna roll over onto that right hip so your left hip, hip is stacked on top. And then let your knee fall down onto that block or the ground if that's available for you. I do recommend the block. 
extend the spine really long, and then maybe guide your right shoulder over to the right a little bit more so you feel like you're more on your upper back. So more of your upper back is resting on the ground. So that might mean you need to lift this block up to another height and then extend your left arm out behind you. And then just run through the checklist. Am I able to breathe easily? Is my spine long? Are my hips in alignment? Am I pushing too hard? Because remember, a yoga class is just a series of suggestions. At no point do you need to follow every single thing someone says to do. As you get further and further into your yoga practice, you'll, you'll start to know your body better than anybody else does. And that will serve you in so many more ways than just the yoga practice alone. Knowing your body and the subtle shifts, how your body has the ability to affect your mental health, your physical health, spiritual health. Two more deep breaths into wherever you're feeling most restricted. Twist it up. Let yourself soften a little bit more. And then you'll very, very slowly, like a sloth, roll onto your back, tent your knees, coming into that constructive resting pose, feet wide as the mat, knees fall in towards the center, close the eyes, breathe in. Fill up the back of the body, breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. One last little pose before Shavasana. We're gonna walk our feet in towards each other. And then we're gonna cross the right foot over the right ankle over the left knee. So it's right on top, right above the knee or right at the bottom of the thigh. So gauge your body from here. So if this feels like quite a stretch, this is doing a lot, you're welcome to stay here. If you want to take it a little bit further, you can lift that left leg up and interlace the hands behind the left knee or the left shin, whichever or the left thigh or the left shin, whichever one feels most accessible. And then you're just drawing that left thigh in towards your body and pushing the right knee very gently away from you. So you can probably start to feel that stretch through the side of the right leg. Just helping to release any tension that we created through our lunges today which I'm so proud that you did. I'm sure you all look like graceful swans. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, release whatever pose you have. Cross the right ankle over the left knee. This side will feel different and you can choose differently. It doesn't have to be the exact same on both sides. Whatever you need on each side, stay here. Grab behind your thigh, interlace your fingers there or interlace your fingers on your shin. Draw the right thigh in and press the left knee very gently away with your elbow. 
It's a very, very subtle movement. Never forcing, contorting, none of that. Be easy. It's the whole theme of the day. Be easy on yourself. Breathe in and breathe out. Let the whole operation go. Determine what you want to be in for your Shavasana. You can come back into that constructive resting pose if that feels good. You can extend one leg out and then the other coming to lie flat on the ground. Wherever you choose, I want you to close your eyes and let the whole face just completely soften, just letting go of expression. Feel your shoulders melting down towards the ground. Feel the breath moving freely through the chest. Feel your stomach easily rising and falling. And just a reminder to continue setting your intention to be easy on yourself to let yourself try new things and be really bad at it or be just okay at it or be okay with growing from wherever you are. We're never in a permanent state of being unless that's what we want. And I doubt that's what we want. I really, really, really appreciate you guys being here. Please stay in your Shavasana for as long as you have time to. You can bring your hands to your heart or you can rest them on your heart. Give yourself all the gratitude for showing up today. You're doing it. I'm so proud of you. You should be so proud of you. I hope to hear from you and how this is going for you. It means a lot that you're here. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow for day four of our beginner yoga series. Namaste, sweet friends. <laughs>